Hi there. Uh, this is a rework of a previous video that I made that was done very bad. And I'm not going to delete the original video because I need to be reminded of never to do that again. But uh, what I'm going to be making and showing you how to make here is thin crust, Chicago style thin crust pizza dough. Uh, sometimes referred to as tavern style pizza dough. And you know, there's all kinds of recipes for this. This is mine. And uh, so I have my ingredients all laid out and ready to go, already all pre-measured and everything. Uh, you know, scale, if you're gonna make pizza dough, gonna do any kind of baking, you gotta have a scale. Uh, so that, these ingredients were measured out with the scale. Actually, some of the ingredients were measured out with a, with a gram scale, and, I, and I'll show you why in a second, very small amount. Uh, anyway, flour. In Chicago, we use Sarasota flour uh, for our pizzas, tr traditionally anyway. Uh, if you can't find Sarasota, maybe you have a brand called Hecker's. It's actually the same stuff. It almost looks the same on the label. Uh, you could also use King Arthur all-purpose flour. Um, the, the, those, all those flours, what they have in common is they have a fairly high protein content. You don't want to use Pillsbury or Gold Medal or something like that. That's a little bit lower protein. Although maybe it'll work. Who knows? Maybe you could use zero zero flour, pizza flour, if you could find that. But I'm using Sarasota, so I'm gonna put all this flour into my bowl. Oh, by the way, we're doing this with hands, no special equipment, you want, we don't need it. And uh, the ingredients that I'm, I'm using, I've measured out to make a 11 to 12 inch pizza. Uh, it depends how thin you can get. My, when, I, when I do it, it winds up being 11, but if you, can, if you really get elbow grease, maybe you can get it to 12. Uh, and that's because I'm going to eat it myself. I don't need to make a big pizza. That's that's fine. It's a personal size as far as I'm concerned. So here, again, here's our flour. By the way, 180 grams of all-purpose flour. Now to that, uh, we're going to add 77 grams of warmish water. Now what do I mean by warmish water? Uh, like 85 degrees or so. What that's what I mean by warmish. Okay. Sometimes it's called tepid. And uh, now what I like to do, since it's not a whole lot of water, is I like to add the salt to the water to get that salt to dissolve. So this is 5.4 grams of salt, not 0.4 decimals. That's why I use this little gram scale, so I can get 5.4 pretty precisely. So I put the salt in there, and uh, I'm gonna give it a good swirl. Actually, I'm gonna stir it. Okay, so. Add this, and the order the order that you add this really doesn't matter too much. We're going to mix it all up with our hands anyway. Uh, this is five grams of instant yeast, and it goes. Don't worry, the salt's not going to kill all that yeast. Actually, five grams seems like a lot, and it kind of is, but we're, we really are just getting flavor out of this anyway. There's not a whole lot of water here. We're not going to get a huge puffy dough ball out of this, but that yeast is going to generate a lot of flavor in our crust, which we do want. Uh, now we're going to add a little bit of sugar. If, if you have regular sugar, half teaspoon would be appropriate here. My, my little secret that I've been using is uh, I like to add barley malt syrup. It smells like when you're, if you've ever brewed beer, it's, yeah, it's that same stuff. It smells like a, it smells like a brewery. And you know, we already got yeast in there, might as well add some barley malt syrup. And uh, I like to do this because it adds some color and it adds a really, uh, just this nice, background flavor it's you can barely even taste it it's not sweet it's actually less sweet than sugar and yeah the, the yeast is going to eat a little bit of it but that's kind of sort of the point is you want to get a little bit of that flavor so now i've got barley malt syrup on my hands here it's very sticky stuff okay then we're gonna we're gonna add a little bit of fat because this this crust is very biscuit like it's not a typical pizza crust at all. It's supposed to be thin, very crispy. Uh, the, the fat's gonna help with that a little bit. And it's not very much. This is 14 grams of lard. Now that's what was traditionally used. If lard makes you wince, you could, this could be butter instead in here, 14 grams of butter. You could go corn oil if you wanted to, but I'm gonna use lard. And, and that's gonna actually go in, I almost, I almost threw it in. Uh, that's gonna go in in a little bit. So we've got our yeast, our uh, water, our salt, our barley malt syrup, and I'm just gonna go with my hands and start mixing, just like this. One finger, because I feel like if you go in with like 
everything, then it gets all over your hands and then you get club hands and it's a mess. But one finger is, is enough to start working it around and your finger actually doesn't get that messy. It kind of cleans itself up as, as this is going around. And then once it starts to, it's gonna start to get sort of shaggy. You can see this. Now, once it gets to this point, then you could start going with two hands and getting it to come together. Now, and this dough, because it has so little water in it, it is not going to look like a dough that you might traditionally think of as dough. It's going to be very, very crumbly. Uh, almost pie crust like which is actually kind of what we're going for so um we're not trying to develop a lot of gluten here either so we're not going to need this very long gluten you want when you're trying to get the, the bread to expand you need the gluten to act like a ropes to hold the thing together we're not doing that we're going to roll this out super thin we don't need the expansion okay so now that now that this has almost completely come together now i'm going to add the fat so there's the, uh, there's the lard in there, and uh, I'm going to keep working it, and I, I just work it in a bowl. You could, you could tor put it onto a table if you want. Uh, if I had more dough than this, that the bowl was awkward, I would probably put it on the table, but it's fine in a bowl, and then I'm not making a mess. And you can see I'm sort of doing a kneading process here, kind of pushing down, and pressing and rolling. And I'll, but I'm not really trying to develop the gluten. I'm just trying to incorporate all of the fat and ingredients together so it looks somewhat homogenous. Okay. Well, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna put it on the table now. So, so not a lot of kneading going on here. Just enough to get it to come together and be somewhat uniform. So when you look at it, when you look at it, it's gonna look just lumpy and you're, and you're there's no, and it's not, you know, just gonna hold, not gonna hold it. You're, not, right? you're saying to yourself, well, what is that? It's gonna be fine. It's gonna sit four or five hours and you can put it in your fridge, use it tomorrow or four or five hours from now, you can, uh, you can, you can roll it up and it's ready to go. Uh, so put it, in a, put it in a container covered and uh, it's not going to get very big, so you, know, you could put it in a, in a Tupperware container like that. It would be just fine in there. Four or five hours, you're ready to bake with it or refrigerate it, use it next couple of days. There you go. Hope, hope this helps. If you want to know what happens next, watch one of the other videos on this channel, and you can see where it goes. Thanks.